Hello and welcome back to another episode of Unfiltered Copenhagen. As always, I am Ford and with me is your lovely co-host, Rudolfo. Hello. How lovely are you feeling today? Uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling quite good. I'm feeling a bit warm. Okay. It's always, I, I always get sweaty when coming here and I'm not even running that fast. I'm not even, I'm just walking. But do you, do you, you don't walk the whole way here. You take the metro. or no, the no, train? No, no, I walk from the train. But okay. It's a, I so, mean, it's, it's a sign that the weather is nice. It's okay. It's kind of, or maybe kinda, it's a sign that it's really warm in here. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. It's uh, it's been raining every weekend, which has been kind of shitty. I know. I was at Roskilde. <laughs> I know it was raining. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You went to uh, you went to Roskilde last week. That's why we missed uh, last week's podcast because you were out there in the rain and the mud. That's true. Tell me about it. How was it? Um, it was nice. It was my first. It was my first time going to Roskilde. Okay. I, you know, you know when you when you hear so much about something and you build up all these expectations about it. And then you get there and it's like, oh, okay, maybe I overrated this a little bit. It, it's not that it was overrated, but I had heard so much about it that I had, I had built this expectation that, I don't know, there's just something crazy happening all the time. And it's just this amazing, in, insane, insane place where as soon as you cross a certain boundary, you're into no man's, I don't know, you know? But and it wasn't I, like that. Well, the thing is, I, 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 I've I been to festivals before. So when I got there, I was a bit disappointed because it's just, okay, <laughs> this is just another fucking festival, you know? Um, I, it, it's like the first time I went to New York. I, I, I always loved New York just from movies and from the music that comes from there and stuff like that. And I just build up this expectation from New York and I get there the first time and I'm like, Okay, I mean it's just, just a city. A city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's there's buildings and there's people, you know. But uh, so that was my initial initial impression from Roskilde. But uh, but it's 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 very nice. I mean, it's it's so big. There's so many people. There's such a big area, so there's a lot of different food stands. There's a lot of events and things happening. I I really enjoyed it, except for the weather. And every year the weather it. is shit, right? It's I, like rain and I it's muddy pretty much every time. I think that's the tradition, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I got there, it was nice. I went there only Thursday and Saturday. When I got there Thursday, it was it was nice. Yeah. Then in the evening, it started raining and I wasn't prepared for it. And I started really envying everybody walking around in rubber boots. Yeah. Um, so we, we I was there with a friend, so we got some shelter and eventually... We just went back to the tent to sleep, and sleeping in a in in the rain was actually not as bad as I expected. Sleeping in a tent in the rain was not as bad as I expected it to be. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, long story short, I I had to come I had to come back to Copenhagen because my friend had bought a tent for both of us to stay there, and uh, you can't really fit even though it's a two people two person tent. You can't really fit two adult males in that tent with bags and stuff like that. So I had to come back home Okay. in the morning, like, I don't know, five, six in the morning, uh, came to sleep at home and, and then Friday was raining the whole day. So I, I just didn't go back Friday. I went back Saturday and, uh, as soon as I got there, I realized that I really should have brought some rubber boots cause it was just muddy everywhere yeah everywhere like i i really couldn't take two steps without fearing just sliding and falling onto the mud and getting mud up to my i don't know my shin so i just bought some some rubber boots as soon as i got there and from then on it was it was fine smooth they, sailing yeah because then i just had rubber boots you know i, I don't care what i'm stepping i can go anywhere yeah and then and then it was great and the sun came out uh i don't know around five six in the afternoon and that was that felt like a real festival. Yeah, it 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 was it was really cool. And I heard some good music. Good music, huh? Who? Uh, what? What bands or acts did you think were pretty good? Well, my favorite was a Slow Dive. Okay, what kind of music is that? They I'm not they play this. Uh, they're they're this band from the '90s. They play what's called shoegazing. It's this kind of dream pop, dream rock music. So. so there's a lot of guitar sound, just layers of guitar sound, kind of like a wall of sound kind of thing, you know? Okay. And then these dreamy vocals and, uh, yeah, melodies and stuff like that. Sounds kind of interesting. I, I liked it. 
I, I was there with a friend who Slow Dive is probably his favorite band as well. So his excitement probably helped me enjoy it a bit more. Okay. What was the best food you ate while you were there? Anything good? Oh, that's a good question. Huh. I mean, nothing nothing particularly stands out. I I just... I, I was also I, I didn't look at like a list of the st- of stuff that they had and uh, want uh, and tried to to find. I I saw there were someone serving cricket burgers. Okay, you didn't and, try and, that. And, well, I, I was very excited about it, and uh, so I went there. It was in the food court, so I went there to try them, and I was just looking at the burger before I bought it. Yeah, and basically, what they say cricket burgers is just a regular burger with some like they had one or two kinds of dressing that was made with i guess ground crickets or something like that yeah so that's not really what i was looking for you know i wanted to eat crickets like i wanted a burger with an crickets entire there patty in the made out of crickets I, I, maybe not something. necessarily the entire patty but at least a bit a uh, big amount of it yeah made of crickets or cricket flour or something like that so what'd you get instead so so they just had the burger with the dressing and then they they dumped like i don't know 15 crickets on top of it or something and I was like, fuck, this is not what I want. So I went for, I, I don't know, I just went for something else random that was there. I don't know if I ate a sandwich, if I ate a burger, I don't know. Okay. Uh, at, on, on, on the last day, I actually remember, because I was there with a friend, and he, he had been there many times before. And he, he said that there was this, this burger place. It's called an ox burger. Yeah. That it's basically just bread and the meat. Okay, that sounds like right up my alley. You know? <laughs> I know, I know. I thought of you. That sounds like what I mean. And uh, and he was like, "Yeah, that's probably my favorite thing to eat here." So I went to I went to try it. It was okay. Just okay. It was okay. I mean, like I I, I could have had a little bit something else in that, you know, like some salad or some cheese. Not maybe some cheese, maybe some some kind of sauce. It just felt a bit bland. I some guess bacon. It didn't taste bad. It was just. I think a little yeah. bit of bacon and cheese would have would have kicked that up a notch. Is what it sounds like. Maybe we could also ask for for extra. I just wanted to get the the real the traditional, authentic experience, traditional one, you know, because yeah. my friend was saying that it's his favorite food at Hoskilde. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not so it. wild about festivals where it's like just pretty much guaranteed to be muddy and shitty the whole time. I mean, uh, it wasn't the whole time. It was only Friday and Saturday, I guess, because yeah. when I got there Thursday, it was nice. But I mean, Friday and Saturday, doesn't that seem like some of the main nights of the festival? Uh, well, yeah, or, you that's know what just, I mean? That's just two days. I mean, you can't really control which days. Yeah, which of course not. I, I don't know. I just, ugh, fuck, man. Slopping around out there in the mud. It's not my idea of a great time. If, if you have, but I mean, I, 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 I guess if you have the rubber you. boots. If you have the rubber the, boots, you really don't all give a shit stuff. anymore. I guess at seriously. some point you don't give a shit, but, but yeah, I don't know. Just got some boots up to your knee. I'm looking forward to, uh, to Smoke Fest, though. It should be good. Hopefully it doesn't rain too much there. Although you are a little bit protected under the the forest and everything, so yeah, it depends how much it rains, I guess. Yeah, and I mean they yeah, at Hoskill they also they take precautions, like they they throw a lot of uh, wood chips and yes, stuff. Yes, yeah, and things like and they put carpets in certain places where I guess at entrances of where a lot of people just walk by. You yeah, know? they put some carpets on above the mud. Yeah, and things like that. So so it helps a little bit. It does. It's not. I mean. It's not a perfect solution. Bring, bring rubber boots. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. once you have them, it really doesn't make much of a difference anymore, unless it's actually Rainy. pouring. I mean, yeah, if it's pouring, you probably don't want to be in the rain, sloshing around. But uh, who knows? I mean, it's my first time. You know, maybe I'm not. Uh, maybe I don't really know how to. So you didn't see anything particularly like wild or notable or anything? People acting crazy or just pretty typical. I mean, it was just a festival. Even if I saw something maybe a bit out of the ordinary i guess it didn't register as particularly as, as something particularly out of the ordinary because it's it's a festival i mean of course the threshold for what what's acceptable is much higher yeah yeah and yeah and i mean i'd been at festivals before like similar kind of festivals maybe nothing as big with as many people i thought it was really interesting when when ice q ice q was playing when when he came when he came onto the stage and you could just hear him from pretty much everywhere. Yeah. You just see these, 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 these people flocking from everywhere just towards the stage, you know? Yeah. It's like this, it's almost like God descended upon the earth and all the, um, like all the believers are just 
running towards the place the, the place where he, he came down to yeah that was really interesting because when were, you have so many people it was really like a, a sea of people all like flocking a, towards like a the stampede same. almost yeah um he replaced uh, a tribe called quest that was supposed to show up i think i think that was the the act that canceled or had to cancel I believe and so. And he replaced. How was his uh his, his performance? Was it pretty lackluster or what? No, I I thought it was great. I mean, okay. I I didn't watch the whole thing. It's not really my kind of music. Sure. But his stage presence was really in in my opinion, it was really good because he really know, he really knew how to put on a show. How, yeah, how to put on a show, yeah. how to take the stage, and how so, to And so so the crowd energy was pretty good. Like yeah, everybody, it, it seemed like everybody was really having yeah, a good yeah, time. Yeah. Well, and that's it, good. It was a lot of people and I I was there in the first 30 minutes, I think, and it was it was nice, even for someone who doesn't know his music or like his music. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. That's good to know. I mean, it's always nice when a replacement act comes in and they they actually do like a good job. You know, the worst the worst thing I guess you could have happen is he comes in and just doesn't really have a good show at all. You know, so. Yeah, but I mean, with someone with that much experience. Yeah, he's been also... in the game a long time. I mean, at least. What, 20, 25 years? Where did he start? Which band did he start on? Uh, He was in, I think... He was in NWA? Yeah, NWA. I don't know if that was the very first thing, but I mean, that's the very first thing that gave him, I guess, a lot of notoriety or or popularity, as far as I recall. Who was in Body Count? There was this band called Body Count. Uh, I don't know. Ice Cube? It was Ice something, I believe. Uh, It could have been Ice... Isn't there also Ice T? I don't know. Let's, let's, Let's look. It, it, it was this like rap punk band or something like that. Heavy metal band formed in LA in 1990. Yeah, Ice-T. it was Ice-T. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's right. Okay. Ice-T and the lead guitarist Ernie C. For someone who's not really into this stuff, Three. it's all the same to me. Three out of the band's original six members are deceased. D-Rock <laughs> died from lymphoma. Beatmaster V from leukemia. Moose Man in a drive-by shooting. Jeez. Shows bad, man. Yeah, I, I I actually listened to their first album when I was very young. Yeah, yeah. Did you like I, it? I I did. I mean, it was also at the time bef- before or at the beginning of me starting to form my own taste in music, and I used to hang around this this place where I used to play Magic the Gathering, the card game, and the the, the guy who owned the place he he basically played his own music there, and he had the first album I think or one of it, their albums. So I just listened to it. And I guess once you listen to something long enough, you kind of grow a taste for it. Hmm. So I guess Ice Cube had some little thing, uh, CIA, which is what, Crew in Action, it performed at parties hosted by Dr. Dre um, before 1986. And then it, like 86 or 87, he showed some, He re- or 87, he released a single that Dr. Dre produced called My Posse, and then I guess Ice Cube and Easy and a few people got together, and then uh, they debuted the group NWA in like 1987. So Dr. Dre was also in NWA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Dre, MC Ren, DJ Yella, and Ice Cube. He was, uh, actually Ice Cube was the only member of NWA that wasn't from Compton. So, huh. I guess Easy e was in there too, right? Who? Easy e and then he had a solo yeah. career as well from 89 on. Huh. I really don't know much about the uh, hip hop or But anyways, I mean, he's been around since the late 80s. I mean, yeah. he's got he's got a lot of credibility in the game, so but that's cool. I'm glad he put on a good show anyway. Yeah, you know what was my my favorite thing about Hoskilde? What's that? My favorite thing about Hoskilde was something that I'd never seen before in any festival. I don't know if it happens or not, but I had never seen it before. So there's people who go there with their own camp. So they're just a group of people, a group of friends. They go there. Yeah. And then in order for them to find their own friends in the middle of the crowd, they basically carry a, a tall pole with a flag. Like a banner. Yeah, a banner. Yeah, like a house banner from Game of <laughs> Thrones or something like that. Yeah. And uh, I'd never seen that before. And that was so cool. That's pretty cool. I loved it. You know, like when when you when you look at the the main stage, like during the Ice Cube concert or some some of the big concerts, where there's like some groups with flags in certain dude, areas. There's just like I don't know, fifty flags in there in the middle. You know, it's it's it was so cool. And then all of them have their own yeah, their own banner, their own. There's a lot of national flags. Yeah. So you see a lot of like there was a Swedish flag, there was a Norwegian flag, there were UK or Australia, but but then others are more creative and they just draw something funny. Yeah. 
um, there's a very classic one, apparently, that's been there for every, every year since the past, I don't know, at least 15 years, which is a, an alien and a cow. Uh, and the, the cow is just held on the alien by the, by the arms. So whenever he, the, the guys move the, the pole up and down or left and right, I guess, yeah. the cow just bounces back and forth. So it looks like the alien is fucking the cow. It's really, it, 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 it looks, it looks really cool. But I mean, I, I, I loved it. It was my favorite thing. You know, it, it's like, instead of having a, basically just a, a mob of people. So instead of having just 50,000 people or something in, in a group. So give different factions. Or yeah, something. exactly. It, it gives it so much more personality because, okay, there's the uh, well, Norwegian flag or. Did, okay, did you, did you see any pathway. fights between groups? No, no. no. Okay. Pretty, I'm, I'm, pretty not, I'm not sure there's rivalries like that. Okay. I, I think it's really just to find it shown it, for people to find their own group in yeah. an easy way. Because it, it's really, it's really difficult. I was trying to find someone uh, at some point and it, it, it's impossible. I mean, yeah. unless you, it, it's, un, unless you have people moving to a specific place, just so like say, let's much, meet here. Too much chaos. There's no fucking way you can meet someone in the crowd unless yeah. you, you, you know, kind of precisely where they are. Yeah. And even if you do, getting there is another ordeal. Entirely. Yeah. What's the favorite uh your favorite festival you ever been to? Oh, that's that's tricky. I don't know. I I don't think I have one that uh that I'd say this is the but, best festival I went well, to. Well, I mean maybe not even the best festival itself, like on its own merits, but like the one you had the best time at ever. Oh, that was probably at Smookfest because of because of you guys, you know? Yeah. Because just hang out. Like maybe two, three years ago. Yeah. Like not the first one, not the last one, but I guess one where yeah, I was there for, years ago. For, a, for a fair amount of time. Yeah. That's How long, are you going to go for pretty much the whole thing this time? Like Thursday to Saturday or? Yeah, I believe so. I, we, I, we, I, we normally go out there on Thursday, right? Yeah, I think so. Nobody shows up on Wednesday. It's too early. Well, uh, we have a friend going on Wednesday. Do we? Yeah. Was it the one that never comes and always <laughs> says he will? Yeah. And okay. the, he just canceled this year again. But oh, he's like, okay, I'll God. just go. I'll just go Wednesday and Thursday. This guy. It's one of our good friends and coworkers. And I remember, every uh, year he's like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to come or <laughs> whatever. And then like the time comes and it's a few weeks until he's like, oh, yeah, by the way, I can't make it. <laughs> it's just like, come on, dude. You know, two years ago, we even took a picture as soon yeah. as he said, okay, this year I'm coming. And we're like, oh, awesome. We all took like a, a selfie type portrait with him yeah to to commemorate the fact that he said he was coming and then he canceled it didn't help what a chump yeah but yeah i mean in terms of festival i, I don't think there's any festival that i'd say this is better than all the others that i've been to have you ever it, been it, to it, boom the portuguese one no i haven't i in, in portugal i've been to the to the three classic ones i don't even know if they go on anymore but it, yeah there's there's three festivals vilar de Mor, sudwest and uh but it's quarter. I've been to those three when I was like in high school. The electronic music or something else? No, no, no. It's just, it's regular. It's kind of like Hoskilde, you know? So okay, it's just so popular acts. Any popular acts, yeah. like rock and rap Yeah, and mostly whatever. pop, rap, pop uh, rock, rap. Okay. Maybe some electronic music at the end. Yeah. Okay. There was some good electronic music at Hoskilde. Was there? Yeah. Anybody I know? I don't know. The On the, when was it? Saturday? night i don't know when it started maybe 12 30 or one in the morning there was Mo mode selector I think okay that's his name it's some german guy i think yeah and uh that sounded pretty good to me techno house something else entirely it was trance he, well he was also there with another guy so which i can't remember the name uh so i i don't know if whatever they were playing was a mix of both or yeah or not but it, yeah it, it was it was a kind of like the kind of music we like, I guess, some techno. -y. It was more techno than house for sure. Okay, from what I remember. Nice. I liked it. Well, I guess I missed out on that one. Yeah, I don't know. We're uh, my girlfriend and I are going tonight to uh, to celebrate the anniversary. Uh, we're going to Sticks and Sushi on the Tivoli Hotel. Oh, the one on the rooftop. Yeah. Or yeah, we've been there twice before. I've never been to that one. Oh, it's so good. The view is amazing. The outside little area is great. Actually, what time do we need to be there? We're going there in like three hours. So, oh, we have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got time. I, I, I like sticks and sushi. 
Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, to be honest, there's places we order from Just Eat that has sushi just as good. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, <laughs> I, I never really think that the sushi there is any more amazing than other good sushi I've had. It's in, like, in that sense, it's not anything to get blown away by. But I guess the selection of all the different things, like they, they have, they do have a few kind of more eccentric items or some desserts that are pretty cool. And other, like you also can get the sticks, of course, like the chicken sticks and different kind of interesting stuff. I think it's more just the ambiance, the the service and the overall kind of setting. It's like very cozy and chill. Do you always get the same stuff? No, not always. But I mean, usually a staple of my sushi is, is I do get some salmon nigiri. Yeah. You can't really go wrong with salmon. Um, but we'll see. I do like some things. I, I might get like a couple pieces of tuna just to see if they have good tuna, but I usually don't because I'm always so disappointed with buy tuna nowadays and it's not really, I guess, very ethical to eat it anyway. But um, that was my favorite fish up until maybe five, ten years ago when you just couldn't really get good tuna anywhere anymore. So Why is that? Uh, because it's been overfished, because, yeah, it's very expensive. Uh, like I think there's some tuna that go in Japan for like a million dollars a piece. Like people bring in these giant tuna and they mm -hmm. go for like, I mean, one fish could be your whole catch for the year. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's uh, it's pretty ridiculous. But yeah, they've been overfished. They're a predator. They take a long time to grow. I mean, they can get up in the, I think, hundreds of kilos in size. Like they can get huge, mm -hmm. but it takes them a long, long time to get that big, you know? Um, and th yeah, they've just been overfished. We've pretty much devastated them, I guess. So sad yeah it is sad because it tastes so good <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i'll probably get some some salmon i'll probably get some other mixed kind of maybe some rolls or something i, I might get some chicken sticks as well or some other interesting kind of chicken sticks well like some some yakitori stick i don't know it might be chicken it might be something else like steak bites or something but yeah. but they have some cool little sticks there I haven't decided 100% yet, so we'll just play it by ear and I'll see what I get when I get there. It's just a shame that it's expensive. It's kind of expensive, that place. Uh, I think for two people, you can get away spending less than maybe 1,500 or 2,000 crowns. Uh, it depends also how much alcohol you drink. Because one time we went there with uh, another couple and it was like four of us. And I think I ended up spending three or four, maybe even 5,000 crowns. It was quite expensive wow. at that time. Okay. <laughs> um, but then again, we were drinking a lot of alcohol. We had ordered a lot of sushi because it was a bunch of us. And yeah, I don't know. I, I think for me, part of what makes it expensive is just that I feel that I can just eat sushi nonstop, you know? Yeah. It's not like when you eat a burger and fries yeah. and after you're done, you're like, oh, I'm full. Yeah. When you eat sushi. <laughs> I mean, it, it also, I think it depends a little bit about how you you order i mean there's a lot of little rolls and stuff that you can get that that don't feel super filling i mean there's also some that that are but if you get like the nigiri like the the thick slices of fish on top of the rice ball type thing and you get like a significant number of those i challenge you to eat like seriously man if you can eat 20 or 25 nigiri pieces and still be hungry or still okay, even well, want to keep going yeah, well or, or still even want to keep going mm -hmm. I did that once. I one time I think I ordered like 24 pieces of salmon nigiri. And I don't know how many grams each one of those things is, but I I ate an enormous amount of fish and rice and I just felt so sick after. But it was like I don't know they had some special going and yeah, I was like, you know, I was like I'm really hungry and I love salmon and anyways. The last time I was at Sticks and Sushi was the one on Borgel. Okay. And uh, right across from Gaslin Grill. Yeah. And uh, when I left, I actually considered, should I have a burger now or not? Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then but, but again, again it, it's, it's not like I was hungry no. when I left, you know? It's just more like, oh, well, I guess I could have eaten something more. Yeah, and I, then there's Gaslin Grill right across yeah. the street, you know? Which I haven't tried yet. Yeah, I still haven't tried it either. And now we got the new one that's in the city that's close to us. Yeah, uh, I, passed, I passed by it on Friday, yesterday. We should we should plan on going there like next week, maybe. Yeah, let's do that. The food has been so unless, shit unless, lately. Unless the food is great every oh, day. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there is that possibility, isn't there? It's like a 2% no. chance. Let's. I mean, I guess they're popular for a reason. Yeah, and I mean, I'm a burger enthusiast, so. Yeah, you need to you need to leave your review. And everybody says it's like the best one. In the city, so it didn't win the the best, uh, Boone's best, best, uh, Boone's best. Uh, 
I think it was nominated, but it didn't win. Yeah, we just looked at the sliders. We looked at that list. Sliders won the list for best burger. I haven't tried sliders. I wonder how that judging process works and how you influence. I think it's votes. Can you buy the votes, basically? Uh, Well, I think it's people voting. So you send a text message and you are basically a vote. Oh, okay. So as long as you have a, I don't even know if you need a Danish number. Okay, but but it's also partly probably how, how heavy your company or your restaurant pushes for people to vote for you right like they probably if you're like oh we'll give you 10 percent off your order if you vote for us in this thing i don't know if that's allowed or not or i don't know if either. if they're really pushy like oh please vote for us and then some people don't care they just have a little thing up that says you can vote for us if you want i'm sure they advertise it like on facebook and things yeah. like that yeah but uh but i'm i'm not sure they take they go like the extra extra mile just sign up for like amazon mechanical turk and buy a bunch of votes yeah I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't. I don't know if that seems like it would be pretty easy to game that system. Yeah, let's let's fuck if they had the voting for the best podcast. Yeah, we maybe could, we could try we, to game it. Game that system, right? Fuck, there. we would win that shit. Yo, we got a five star <laughs> review on on iTunes. We do. Yeah, one of our one of our coworkers and friends who listens to the podcast okay. all the time said he left us. He dropped us a oh, five star nice. review on iTunes. I, I don't even know how many people listen to us on iTunes. We, 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 we no don't stat- yet. Yeah, we, we no don't stats. yet because iTunes historically has provided no statistics for podcast uh, hosters. But that's all changing with the new changes coming up in iOS 11. And I think they're doing some changes on the podcast store. So basically, podcast creators will have access to stati- like more st- or some statistics, which they never had any access to. And then I think there's some other cool things, some features for both the content creators and the listeners. So that's kind of exciting. But yeah, if you feel like uh, dropping a review, it would be, uh, it's helpful to us anyway. It's like some more visibility, especially on Stitcher. I don't think we have anything <laughs> going there. It's like, we, we and, and the thing is, the, the stats for Stitcher are so weird. We looked like, I don't know, a month ago, and we saw that there was like 10 or 20 hours of listening, like 10 or 20 hours of listening time in, in whatever month that was. And then we looked recently and it's like 23 minutes in a month. And you're like, well, this doesn't even make any sense, you know? So I, I, I don't know. I think something's wrong with the Stitcher statistics as well. They're always kind of all over the place, which doesn't make sense. Because like with the SoundCloud stuff, the stats are pretty much like you can. It seems to follow like a, a fairly predictable pattern, you know? Do you, on, a, on a very related note, do you think... Uh... I was just thinking about this. I don't know where it came from. Do you think that if, uh, because we're talking about restaurants. Yeah. If, let's say, Denmark, the, the how do you call it? Like the, the, the politicians, the ones that are in power now. If they actually, actually manage to kick out a lot of these foreigners, do you think the restaurant business, it would suffer a lot? Because a lot of the employees, like for Noma and stuff like that, are foreign. are foreigners like interns and stuff like that. And then so much, so many restaurants are basically people bringing their own cuisine from their country Yeah. here. Yeah. That'd be heavily affected by this. Yeah, I guess so. I, I, I mean, surely there used to be much more like uh, Pusavant or whatever, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. the traditional Danish stuff. And now it's pretty much all like a shawarma and falafel place, right? Well, you still see the Pusavon hey, around. Not that, there's not that many. What? There's a handful. No, yeah, but in terms of like, I guess street food really exploded in the past few years. It's become really popular and yeah. trendy and hip. Yeah, and and a lot of those are, well, a, a, a lot of those are Danes who are just basically trying to make something with a different uh, style, style or something. or something like that. But a lot of them are foreigners. Yeah, that of just course. make food like I don't know tacos. Yeah. I mean, uh, look, why not? I mean, honestly, Danish cuisine is all right. I mean, when you talk about New Nordic, I know that's a big deal in terms of fine dining and fancy stuff. But as far as just comfort or like quick on the go food to to run and grab, I mean, what do you really got there? Like a Fleska style sandwich or a booth sandwich, if that's your thing. Yeah, you don't. But and, and then maybe like a hot dog, if that's what you consider a national dish. I mean, I guess in the U.S. you also I, I don't know if anybody really considers a hot dog. I guess they do consider it some national dish here, the whole Pusavon thing, but it's such a lazy fucking dish. It's a piece of sausage that you heat up and put on bread. Like, it's not even a interesting, you know? But w- what I'm getting at is I think that there's so many foreign foods that, that just are much better than the traditional Danish cuisine. 
No, but but you you got a point there with the uh, what can you just grab and take and eat there so and and eat like yeah on like the like way like eat on like the that. go yeah just show up hey give me a burger or some fries or yeah let me get when, a taco when, when I came here like nine years ago it was pretty much only the Pulsivons I guess and for maybe, on the go food yeah and maybe Seven Eleven. Yeah, which they also serve sausages. Yeah, and not much else, like some pizza, like pre-made pizza yeah. things. And of and course, some you, you can go to McDonald's and grab yeah. a burger and walk, like just walk with it and eat yeah, it. Yeah, but, but McDonald's burgers suck. Well, it was just an example. I mean, I think the only thing that McDonald's has is pretty good is their fries, and even then, you know that shit is not real fries. It's like, I don't know what the hell is in that recipe, but <laughs> you you can leave those fries out for like a decade and they'll never deteriorate. Someone made an experiment about that with the burger. Yeah. I think it was Kenji from Serious Eats. Okay. Uh, it's crazy. That, but, that... but he actually said that it's it's basically because it dehydrates very quickly. Okay. So it doesn't, like, then since there's no water in then the, there's the no, rest, there's no, no rot. Or exactly. Mold. There's no mold, no rot, no, no stuff <laughs> some, growing. So some, it just stays something there. ain't right with that burger, <laughs> you know? And also you can take, like, McDonald's burgers are not very good. Uh, Burger King, on the other hand, at least as far as fast food goes, is a little better. Just I think the the flavor profile of the the flame broiled or whatever it gives like a, a nicer flavor. I wouldn't say that it's an amazing burger, but as far as fast food burgers go, I think uh, Burger King is one of the slightly better ones. Max Burger is kind of okay. Eh. It, I mean, we're talking fast food burgers. I mean, None if we're talking really about those, I think, like those, I'm not even going to include Yo Burger. There was a Yo Burger at Roskilde, by the way. Oh, yeah? Did yeah. you get one? No, I didn't. Oh, come on, doll. Well, I, I, I can get Yo Burger. All, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I right. want to try something Let's Try different. a cricket burger. <laughs> chump. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking chump. I, when I was in university, that's when I found Burger King for the first time. Yeah. And uh, I got so addicted to How it. How many kilos did you gain? I don't know, but uh, but I was eating Burger King quite regularly, at least once a week. Yeah, sometimes more. It's uh, it's kind of expensive here. In the U.S., you can get like a burger meal and or like a burger menu with fries and everything for like three or four bucks. Oh yeah, I mean, like th- imagine, that, that kind I'm, of fast I'm, food imagine if you could get like uh like that here for twenty one crowns, like a menu. Yeah, that, I, that I, be... I don't think I'd ever cook anything or like, you know what, I'd just be so fucking lazy. Show up, 15, 20 crowns, here you go, I'm hungry. Yeah, I think, uh, well, I don't, I don't know the reasons for it to be more expensive here, but... Uh, the labor, for sure. Yeah, maybe. So so you think once once we get uh, all of this shit automated and you can just get a Burger King or a McDonald's burger from from a machine, that will go down in price? Maybe. But probably not. You don't think there's some kind of tax to like anti-obesity tax? So let's just make this more expensive. Let's just charge them oh, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. to uh-huh. dissuade people from from eating. I don't know. Possibly. I I, I really don't know. Actually, there's something called the uh, Big Mac Index. Yeah, which is that determines, economists actually yeah. use to to rate. I guess the purchasing deca- power. Yeah, of purchasing power individuals. Of, yeah, and. I, well, I, I I haven't looked at it recently, but I wouldn't be surprised if Denmark was it's pretty, high pretty much at the top. Yeah. yeah, it's a pretty expensive Big Mac here. Yeah, yeah you, you can probably get what three three menus in the states for for the price. Of yeah, what you I get think I here. think you can get three or even four menus for the price of what you pay here. So you can like feed a whole family on like. Yeah, it's not the most healthy, nutritious kind of shit. But if you're like low income and kind of poverty stricken person i mean of course you you could technically do better probably buying some groceries and and putting it together yourself but at the same time like if you're out and about and you just need to feed your family something like you can 15 20 bucks maybe even less depending on how you do it i mean you can get something from like taco bell or burger king or something like that maybe it's good to bulk yeah if if you're bulking yeah you want a high calorie option i guess that's it's not a clean bulk i don't think is what you would consider it but uh it's bulking. So what else we got? We kind of looked. Ah, man, we've been trying to get away from so much news anchor. Like, let's report every article we've ever seen on Copenhagen. But uh, we did see a few things. It's kind of a slow news year. <laughs> um, Maybe we just have the wrong sources. 
I don't know. We check all the... Well, okay, we didn't check Extra Blood all today. I mean, I guess... We, I <laughs> Which guess, maybe uh, it was a good idea. To be I don't fair, know. I guess we could do that and get some <laughs> clickbaity shit going. But uh, yeah, there is a monster beetle that's returned in Denmark. Look at that thing. It, that, that looks quite nasty. It looks but, terrifying, that fucking thing. But it also looks nasty because it's so close. It's such a close-up picture. Close up. There's like, this is like a screw here. This thing is like 10 centimeters long. Yeah, okay, but it's still a beetle, you know? It's it's not like a small dog. Dolph, it's like that. I mean, that thing was on the table that's not, with that's us. Not, that's not 10 centimeters. Come on, me. Dolph. If that thing was on the table with us, it's got to be at least like that big. It's smaller than the, the image right now on the... Yeah, but I mean, come on. You don't think it's like that? Just just kick it. If that thing just was on run the away. T- how, that, how fast are they? How if, fast if are that beetles? thing was on the table, I bet it would bite your finger off. Yeah, but I'm not going to get my finger close to it. All right. For how the, fast are beetles? I don't know. What do I look like, a beetle fucking expert? I don't, it seems like that. <laughs> for, for almost the first time in 50 years, the largest beetle found in Europe, the stag beetle, has been discovered in the Danish nature. Uh, they revealed that four stag beetles, two males and two females, have hatched in Duohaven Park, just north of Ooh. Copenhagen, after beetle larvae were re- released four years ago as part of a breeding program. Oh, so they introduced them to Yeah, the... I guess so. Why? They, they make noise like a lawnmower. <laughs> and they can they can grow to almost 10 centimeters in length. It has a life cycle during which it lives five years as a larva underground before metamorphizing into an adult beetle. It's been four years since we released larva. And it's these larva which are now turning up as adult beetles a year before expected. Wow. They thrive in a habitat consisting of dead wood and sunlight. Huh. That's kind of weird. I don't know. I don't want to see them, but uh, I mean, if they're in the park, I, I, I can deal with them. I, I think the first time I was, are you, are you creeped out by like big or like creepy insects? A little bit. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, de- definitely a little like bit. Like shit with least. pinchers and big stingers, like 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 insects that can hurt you or like seem like they have some. Like a wasp is a good example of why the fuck did nature do that? It's just a giant fuck you to everything else. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a very good reason for uh, them. But what about uh, mosquitoes? Is there a good reason? Oh, I mean, no, I, I don't like mosquitoes. But no. but yeah, I mean, it's it's just a fucking mosquito. I I mostly don't like them when I'm asleep. Mm. So or when I'm trying to sleep because when they just oh. close to your ear, you know, it's like oh, and they geez. bite you all night, and then you wake up fucking. Yeah, but but, but it's not itching. even about it's not even about that. Not not saying that I like that, but it's not even about that. It's really just the the physical. You, you know, you're you're, tr- you're trying to fall asleep, and you're you you get to that point where you're dozing off, and you you're already like more than fifty percent into dream world, and, and then all of a sudden, some just little you're, bug in your ear. Zzz, zzz, ah, <laughs> yeah, that's not the best. No, I I I'm I'm not a big fan of insects in general. Um. Uh, Except to eat them, I guess. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I my first my first experience with beetles or rather cockroaches, but any kind of beetle cockroachy looking thing, was when I when when I was living in the in California. And you just see them everywhere. Like if, even just walking on the street, like especially in the summer, I guess you just walk on the street and you 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 see them crawling in front of you. And I think I get kind of disgusted by the the thought of cr- crushing them, crunching like them under your feet, yeah, yeah crushing, then, crunching, uh, stepping on them. Yeah, because if if it's if if they didn't have that shell, I guess in my mind, it, I mean, it's not like I'm trying to kill them, but at least if it happens by mistake, it's like okay, well, maybe I didn't. I, the crunchy I didn't sound know, and feeling, but the crunchiness of it kind of creeps me out a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, and, I don't know, man. This thing looks pretty serious. Look at those fucking jaws. Yeah, but if you look at an ant, they, look they also they also look too. quite quite terrifying. They're just really yeah. tiny. Oh, well, not all of them, but but yeah, there are, there are some. That's some scary fucking ants, like those bullet ants they have in the. I think it's in the Amazon. Those bullet ants. They say that on there's a guy that that created the pain scale for insect bites. Hmm. I forget his name, um, but it, but there's a whole scale of like how painful a certain insect sting or bite is, and the bullet ant I think is one of the most painful uh yeah pain index what is this guy schmidt or something yeah the schmidt pain index which thing hurts the most so like a 1.0 a sweat bee 
A light, ephemeral, almost fruity. A tiny spark has singed a single hair on your arm. What's that's, a sweat bee? Is that the regular bee? I don't know. Some shitty bee. I don't know. Yeah. So that's a 1.0. It's a light, pain, ephemeral, almost fruity. A tiny spark has singed a single hair on no, your okay. arm. No, okay. Honey bees below. Okay. 1.2, a fire ant. Sharp, sudden, mildly alarming, like walking across a shag carpet and reaching for the light switch. I guess you have like some static shock or something. 1.8, a bullhorn acacia ant, a rare, piercing, elevated sort of pain. Someone has fired a staple into your cheek. That kind of sounds a little painful. 2.0, a bald-faced hornet, rich, hearty, slightly crunchy, similar to getting your hand mashed in a revolving door. (laughs) 2.0, yellow jacket, hot and smoky, almost irreverent. Imagine W.C. Fields extinguishing a cigar on your tongue. Hmm. Hmm. 2.x, I guess this is honeybee and European hornet. They're a little more than those. 3.0, the red harvester ant, bold and unrelenting. Somebody is using a drill to excavate your ingrown toenail. (laughs) Doesn't sound very pleasant. 3.0, a paper wasp, caustic and burning, distinctly bitter aftertaste, like spilling a beaker of hydrochloric acid on a paper cut. Ooh. Doesn't sound good. 4.0, a pepsis wasp. Blinding, fierce, shockingly electric. A running hair dryer has been dropped into your bubble bath. If you got stung by one, you might as well lie down and scream. And 4.0 plus, a bullet ant. Pure, intense, brilliant pain. Like walking over flaming charcoal with a three-inch nail in your heel. Hmm. So yeah, that uh, that bullet ant. Where did they live? Amazon? I think so, yeah. Pretty sure. And they're regular sized ants, or they're uh, they're, no, really they're, big? they're they're pretty pretty big. I think they get up to like an inch long or something. Yeah, they're, they're pretty damn big. Let me see. Well, there's one on that guy's finger in that picture. Yeah. Yeah, these things. Yeah, are, that's, that's these a, that's things a are nasty. Hmm. Distribution, yeah, Central and South America. You know, that's one of the good things about the weather here. Is that you don't a, have there's too many a lot, bugs. There's a lot fewer bugs, even than Portugal, for example. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, and and also there's not a lot of shitty bugs here. Like in other words, there's not so many really like first off, I don't think there's that many dangerous like actual poisonous or no, or no serious no, no, things no. to look out for like you have in Australia and in some parts of the US. No. Yeah. And then on top of that, yeah, there's just not that many bugs. I guess you don't really have too many roaches here. Um I don't know, I'm trying to think about anything else. We never really seen any ants around here too much inside the house or no, with the, there's there's those wasps when we're in the roof terrace. Yeah, the wasps work. are, but that's about it. The wasps are kind of annoying, but I don't know. Other than that, it's not not too big a deal. But yeah, this fucking beetle, man, it's looking creepy. That looks really nasty. Anyways, but it's small. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Ten maybe, centimeters. Maybe if I saw that one. small. Well, Jesus no, Christ, that's like it's, a little it's small. small compared to me. Yeah. Well. <laughs> That's what I mean. Imagine you're sleeping at Roskilde and one of those things crawls into your sleeping bag, you know? Do you think that could uh, bite, bite you, through the... Bite you right in a dick? No, bite through the, the tent. Yeah, but look at those fucking... Those jaws, man. That can bite through your finger, I think. Uh, All right. How much is... No, never mind. 10 centimeters. 10 Fine. centimeters. All right. Fine. So there yeah. you go. I mean, no, okay. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want something like that... In a hospital, if I'm sleeping, I guess it would creep me out a little bit if I knew I was there was a few a few of them just surrounding the tent. I think I, I think it's cool that there's a pain index for all those things. Some guy actually went out and got stung intentionally by all those things to compare and make it's notes. Science for it. I yeah, mean, and, of course and it guess is. what? Of course it is. You're you're saying his name now every time yeah. you it's, Schmidt. It's like Schmidt. The Schmidt pain index. You're you're basically basically he. He lives on through that. Pain he lives index. on forever, or until a new scale comes out. Yeah, it's like Richter, Richter, Richter. What's the other one? Uh, the uh, the heat or the spiciness scale. There's a Scoville unit. Scoville, right? yeah, yeah. Is that was that a guy's name or a place where it originated? Or I what? have no idea. The Scoville units. I have a friend of mine who just recently he posted on Facebook that he he had bought the 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 hottest chili. What's the hottest one now? Like, is it a I ghost chili or like something like that? I can't remember. Maybe. I can't remember the name, but it's the one that, uh, yeah, ghost pepper. The ghost chili. That, it was yeah. that one. Yeah. So he bought a bag of that online. Oh, and, shit, uh, man. One million Scoville units or more than one million. 
Oh, and the, I, Carolina, I th- the Carolina Reaper. I no, think Carolina is the, Reaper. Okay. That's the one he bought. Yeah, that's got, the one this he bought. is the current world record holder. I think. And that's the one that uh, Chili Klaus had a video trying that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it was the one with Booba. And I think it's by far my favorite video that he, that he launched. One that point. Released. I love that. Let's see. 1.56 million Scoville heat units. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, because I think I think when you go to like to jalapenos, they have like a few thousand. Yeah, I, I don't think it's that much. Yeah, Scoville scale. Let's look at this thing. Uh, where is a jalapeno? Yeah, a jalapeno is thirty five hundred to ten thousand. Yeah. So this thing is up in the, <laughs> this thing is up in the company of the Dragon's Breath, the Komodo Dragon Chili Pepper, <laughs> the Trinidad Moruga Scorpion Pepper. Naga Viper Pepper, Infinity Chili. I mean, these are like, they're not fucking around. You know, talking about peppers, I was I was talking to a friend of mine. And uh, he was telling me how he went to Grillin, yeah. Grillin the, the burger bar. Yeah. Because apparently they have or they had um, a special chili burger where if you if you can eat the whole thing, without drinking maybe i don't know if drinking was allowed or not but i don't think it was so if you if you eat the whole thing without drinking you get it for free and like my my friend two of my friends went there just to try it yeah when when they asked for it the the witch like uh, are you sure <laughs> are you sure they're like yeah yeah and they made them sign an agreement of but you they know wouldn't like, sue them yeah or something. exactly stuff like that and then they bring the burgers and apparently they have four different kind of chilies. They, they make a paste. So it's not even a sauce. They make a paste yeah. with four different kinds of chilies. And supposedly like different chilies affect like different, different parts. parts of your mouth or of your yeah. organism, you know. And they chose basically the four that would kind of complement each other for maximum destruction. And they just make this thick paste that they put basically on top of the burger. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so my fr- yeah my friend was eating it and just drinking milkshakes nonstop, and he had to time the milkshakes to make sure that he would never run out so whenever it was like one fourth left he would order the next one already you know so there was never a time where it completely ran out of milkshake but and, i thought that was part of the challenge you can't drink anything oh yeah yeah but he, I, I think he just like yeah, gave the, up, fuck it gave, there's no gave I'll, up the challenge i'll right gladly away. pay for this yes <laughs> Fucking my, defeated on a first <laughs> bite, you know? Oh, never mind. I can't handle my, this. My other friend, I, I didn't see this. It's just the way he described it. My other friend, he he was just like shaking and trembling everywhere and okay. keep eating it. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh man, I, I have like tunnel vision. And then he was moving his arms like to the right and to the left. And it's like, here I can see it. Here I can't, you know? Okay. And... uh yeah, I mean, it basically, it didn't sound like something that I wanted to try. Yeah, that my, didn't sound my, very my, my, pleasant. My friend was telling me that for the next, like, eating it was, like, just the first step. <laughs> like, 25% of the whole experience was eating it. <laughs> he, he was basically telling me that uh, he could draw his whole intestine just by feeling the, feeling heat. the heat and the pain as it goes through it. Yeah. And that uh, for the next yeah twenty four hours or until until it just came out of his body, he basically every once in a while he just have to literally stop. Like if he's walking on the street, he has to stop, stop and let that settle. <laughs> yeah, and just kind of curve like a the, the whole his whole like belly, like flex his aches. core and just kind of yeah, like and he just brace stays himself. there for for thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, sometimes you get that feeling like if you. Uh, Maybe not if you're getting like food poisoning, but you know, sometimes you eat something and it's like not agreeing with you and you're like, it, you get kind of the warble garbles and it hits you all of a sudden. You're like walking and it's like, wow, wow, wow. yeah, and but you, that shit you, just like, comes you, out. Yeah. Yeah. But then you quick. need to stop like moving and doing what you're doing. But I can imagine that that yeah. chili, I can imagine is like a hundred times worse. I mean, seriously, from, from what he was describing, it was just such a large volume of chili because I, I love, I love hot food and I love chili and I, I don't mind trying something extremely hot but the sheer amount like the volume of the whole thing that they consumed yeah I, it can't be good for you i mean no. it, it, seriously it can't be good for you because it's going to basically burn your whole butthole <laughs> body as as it passes through you know yeah 
because one thing is you eating one habanero or one one of those Carolina Reaper. And I mean, yeah, it's mixed with everything else that you ate and maybe it burns a little bit, but it's okay. Another thing is you have basically a, a sludge of hotness just going through your body. Yeah. Devastating everything on the way, you know? Well, there's apparently a new one. Um, which is is challenging the Carolina Reaper is the dragon's breath. It's a chili pepper uh, developed in Wales in association with Nottingham Trent University. It's been tested at 2.48 million Scoville units, which would make it the hottest chili on record, surpassing the Carolina Reaper. Remember, the Carolina Reaper is only 1.6 million. Makes it seem like chump change in comparison. I mean, I presume that after a certain value you can't really tell much difference i might be wrong uh well i don't know uh, seriously well, i mean one, there's well, only so many pain okay. receptors you well, have one person who tasted the pepper had a numb mouth for two days <laughs> <laughs> they suggest the pepper's ability to numb the skin might make it useful as an anesthetic for patients who can't tolerate other anesthetics or in wow. countries where they're too expensive uh on the other hand experts at the university warn that swallowing one might cause death by anaphylactic shock yet <laughs> Holy shit! You know you, you, that's the thing. When 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 do we stop? Yeah, <laughs> it's when when somebody dies. When when it causes actually someone to die. No, then it even gets more popular. Then more people want to try it. It's like that risk thing. I don't know. No, it will get banned. Come on, they're studying it for for medical. You uses. you'll be able to buy. I, I like in 15, it's, it in says, fifteen years you can buy this shit on not look, this one. You can buy the hottest ones on on the dark net because they're illegal. Look, but it says this guy was this this chili was grown by Mike Smith, a grower in uh, Denbyshire. Or Shire, oh, sorry about my pronunciation here, who said he hadn't planned to break the world record for chili heat. He just, I guess he was doing, they were doing a test of special plant food at this university. Yeah, I mean, I think, huh. you know, I think it, I think it's great that they keep doing it and keep, keep, keep pushing the limits. I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm, when not gonna, they will stop. I'm not going to be eating them, but, but yeah. Well, there you go from a beetle to a, to a chili. I'd rather eat the fucking beetle. I, I'm not so big on on spicy foods. I mean, I like spicy food, and I and I like I like it very hot, very spicy. I mean, I I kind of need to be prepared, for like it. to the point where you almost can't eat it. Like, do you like that? Like, because because there's been some, no no when no, when no. I went to uh, but I like to sweat when I'm eating it. Okay, uh, when I went to Edinburgh, there was a Thai place that got like I don't know if it got a it was in the Michelin Guide, and. uh they offered their like also i've been a little bit spoiled because denmark when people say things are spicy i i take my expectations down about a, a factor of 10 cuz things that are quote spicy to danes like have slightly a little bit of salt and a tiny bit of flavor on them you know what i mean mm-hmm. like danes when they say spicy it's like even a few spices just a tiny bit is like enough for them to be like oh this is too spicy and I'm not quite at that point of like weakness, but I also don't really like very hot foods. That's a broad statement right there. I'm going to let it sink. Go on. All right, whatever. <laughs> let, let it sink in, you know? So we went, to, we went to this place in Edinburgh. I forget what it was, but it's some Thai place on the Michelin Guide. And I think you can order the food on a spiciness, a spiciness level from like zero to four, right? And I'm thinking to myself the whole time, I'm like, you know, I'm going to go with like a two, right? That way mm-hmm. I'm like... Yeah, below below the middle. Below the midpoint and, and like at least maybe that'll be reasonable or something like that. You know, like I, I don't want to go too hot to where I'm not going to enjoy the food at all. Because that's usually the worst. If I get it too hot, it's like I almost can't yeah, even can't enjoy the food it. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, the lady comes around and then everybody I'm with is like ordering it like a three. <laughs> And you know, then finally, I'm, like a chump. I'm the last one to order, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's you know, it's all guys at the table. There's that kind of, I'm like, I'm figuring as soon as I ordered this shit at a two, I'm never gonna fucking hear the end of this. These guys, are, oh, it's a little too much of a pussy. Couldn't have the fucking three, could you? You know, gotta get the two, you know. And and so I'm like, I'm like, all right, how bad can it be? A three out of four. Turns out it's pretty fucking bad. Like I ate it. I almost couldn't eat it. It was so hot that it was basically on the border of being edible for me. And uh, I think everybody was just kind of sweating at the table. Like nobody really had been prepared for that level of heat. It was pretty good anyway. But but I'm not that I'm not a big fan of that. But nobody complained. Uh, nobody wanted to, I don't to, think to any, be like the, nobody, the weakest. 
or to sound like the weakest. I guess like so. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. It's a typical man shit. Everybody, yeah. everybody wanted to order a two, but they just bumped it up to a three instead. <laughs> yeah, or, the first one basically yeah, decided set for the everybody tone else. For yeah. everybody. Yeah, that's right. I should have ordered it too. It would have been better. Did you tell him that? Uh, yeah, I think so. I, th- I think I, I just was like, man, I, I should have got the one a little. I was like, I was, th- I was telling him the whole time I was eating it. I was like, man, you guys fucking made me order the three. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. It's bastard. almost like the brownie story. What brownie story? The one from yesterday. The, the oh, that was terrible, good. terrible tasting brownie. That was a good story. I, I feel like you, when you work on your. Like when you work on your delivery for that story, that can yeah. be like a like a ten out of ten. All like right, I'll, I'll tell you this on a future future podcast once yeah. I once I practice well, it. A the bit the more. other thing is too, I feel like the way that it went down is almost as funny as the way it could have went down. Let's not talk about it if I'm not going to tell the story. All before. right, let's not talk about let's it. Talk but, about but, guns, but, but you know, yeah, let's talk about guns. I didn't go shooting today, but oh, I, sh- yeah. I should have. Well, but you have a plan of going regularly, or yeah, yeah, I think I'm gonna go every week or two uh, with our with our good friend who mm-hmm. uh, has a membership up there and I guess has a gun up there or something. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some shooting. Um, I, I used to shoot all the time, uh, so so it's just fun. I mean, it's just something to do. Target practice. It's one of those things where you feel a bit in like a meditative state when you're really focused on the on like the target shooting. So. I'm going to give that a try. But speaking of guns, there is a weapon or there was a weapons bust in Norboro. They were looking for cannabis. They instead found a cache of weapons. Uh, they discovered an Uzi, a hand grenade, an M95 rifle, and a pump action shotgun. I think it was sawed off. The, where was this Blogold skill in Norboro? Do you know where that is? Yeah. yeah. It's a, some youth club there. It's, they were, a, it's, a, it's a popular walking street. The police were confident they would find cannabis at Blogod's bunker and, and they arrived with a warrant but found no drugs. It was as if the drug dealers knew they were coming, or had they? <laughs> no shit. Uh, because then they discovered a bunch of guns and a grenade. A fucking hand grenade. The, who the, grenade, who the you, fuck keeps a hand grenade? Did, did we talk about it? or I, I, don't, I don't know if I only read it because we talked about the, the police... Yeah, having they, that day where the yeah. people could deliver, uh, return their guns without per- it, fear of persecution. No, it wasn't just a day. It was like a whole month. Or a week it, or yeah, a month. It's, or it says right like here, that. midnight at Jul- on July 1st was the last chance to hand in weapons anonymously without punishment. And the police confirmed that thousands have taken part across the country. But uh, the, the thing that happened, I don't know if, if we mentioned it or if I just saw it during the week. The, the police actually tweeted, I believe. Yeah. Uh, saying that please don't bring your grenades just call us and we'll go get them yeah because yeah. i guess a lot of people are bringing grenades into the <laughs> and, and it's like no don't bring that shit yeah, yeah, in yeah. here it's like hold on um yeah they among the artillery that was handed in was tear gas over a hundred hand grenades and a british incendiary device from world war ii Holy shit, man. A What's a British fu- incendiary device? Oh, it's just some... Like a flamethrower? Yeah, well, I, I don't know if it was actually a flamethrower or it could have been like a firebomb type thing. It's like a like a fire grenade kind of thing. Damn. But yeah, it could have been a flamethrower. But and tear gas. A hundred fucking hand grenades. Can you imagine like the devastation a hand grenade goes off in like society, like just a normal I'm actually, I, I, I don't think I'm fully aware of it. I mean, of course I can imagine it, but I don't, I don't think I have a realistic... Uh, or accurate idea of I'm pretty sure anything within like 20 30 meters is like royally fucked like every any living thing within that radius is just hit by like an enormous amount of shrapnel 30 meters I don't know I mean what's the explosion radius of a hand grenade let's look it up I mean, blast radius big. of a hand grenade uh okay yeah, the the average soldier can throw an M67 grenade 35 meters. The effective casualty producing radius is 15 meters and killing radius is 5 meters. Okay. So within 15 meters, you're going to get fucked up. Within 5 meters, you're going to die. Yeah. Effective casualty producing radius. Mm-hmm. So that means that... It, you're going to be mean, fucked up. Like you might not yeah. die, but you're going to be like either severely crippled or missing a leg or I don't fucking know. Hmm. Huh. That's fucked up. Well, it's good they're returning them. Yeah, I guess so. I can't believe there's a hundred out there. 
And those are the only the ones that were turned back. You know, there's probably thousands more. Do you think the people who returned them kept like one or two just for <laughs> I don't fucking <laughs> just know. Just for a emergency? I, I do not know. Some fragments can disperse out as far as 250 meters. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Don't play with Don't play with grenades. grenades. No. No. Or with gun. Well, yeah, fine. I'd, you can play with guns for it, I guess. As long as you do it in a responsible manner, I guess. Well, there you go. Pain so, uh, index. do you think the pain index from uh, from, from, a from a grenade must be uh, pretty high? Pretty high, huh? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they found an Uzi. That's crazy. So, yeah, there you but go. I, th- I think what's crazy is just imagining that they found this stuff on Blogos, girl. Because I just you never such really a popular think, street. You know, I passed there so many times. You never and think about a guy with an yeah, Uzi just and knowing some hand that grenades. There's, a, there's an Uzi like on like I don't know, 25 meters from where I am. When I'm just chilling there in a cafe. Yeah, think about that next time you're you're walking by the. I do think about bunker. stuff like that. You know, sometimes just randomly pops into my head if I'm walking on the street, just imagining like, well, maybe I just passed by a a serial killer today. You know, I mean, maybe a serial ki- a killer is too. But like, if if I'm in Vegas, yeah, especially Vegas. Like, if I'm in Vegas and there's just so many people around, I'm I've surely already crossed paths with mobsters and like people who are quote unquote up to no good you know yeah. all the fucking time in Vegas and you and, don't even know and it. I, I don't even know consider yourself lucky Dolph well I guess I'm lucky uh, yeah didn't get yeah, your so. your head cut off by some serial killer no why would they do that to me I don't know when I went to uh, when I went to circus, we stayed at Circus Circus one <laughs> yeah, year. Yeah, that's, that's did, so did, did, I don't know if I told you this story or not on the podcast. Go on, maybe. But Go on. Anyways, I was involved in a in a billiards a pool league, and uh, you would play for I don't know uh, half a year or something, and you would pay I don't know ten bucks per week, and basically you would go out, you'd drink some beers, you'd shoot some pool with your buddies, and there was like a whole league and a scoring system. And one year we were like one of the best teams in our region. And uh, we won basically a trip to Vegas. So then kind of all that money that all the other teams have paid out over the entirety of the league, that goes toward the grand prize of like flying somebody out and getting a hotel so they can play in the Vegas competition. And then, yeah, you can even get more prizes there and stuff like that. So our team got a free ride to Vegas and a free hotel. Well, of course, we got the shittiest hotel like probably on uh, in Vegas, which is the the Circus Circus. And not only that, we got Manor Side, which is like the other shittiest part of that hotel, you know. <laughs> um, and, and and fair enough. I mean, it's free. You can't really complain that much. You're gonna you're in Vegas. I mean, you're not really gonna be in your hotel that much unless and you're, you're on the strip. Like yeah, you don't have to get a cab. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, kind of, kind of, kind of on a strip. So. So I remember thinking, ah, whatever, it's not a big deal. And, you know, I, I just didn't care. I was going to Vegas. It's the first time I've ever been. I was going to a pool tournament. It was going to be awesome. And you're only going to sleep in the room when you're tired or, you know, you're hungover or something like that. I walked in to just the hallway of Manor Side. And I just remember it smelled like somebody had had like a pound or two of like some hydroponic weed. It was like the strongest fucking weed smell I've ever smelled like in an area where there wasn't actually smoke that I could see. So, I mean, it was almost like somebody had a grow operation inside the hotel, you know? And I was like, all right, well, you know, it's Vegas, whatever. I walked down the hall to my room, and there was, like, screaming from some rooms. Like, it almost sounded like a like a like somebody is suffering or getting beaten in another room. Like an abduction? You know? Yeah, and, you know, okay, mind your own business. You don't know what they've got going in there. You know, somebody with a whip and chain or something. It was a kink. Could have been. And I walked into the the room I was in and there was a blood streak, like a <laughs> blood spatter all across the headboard and the wall, like a streak, maybe like one and a half meters wide. Looked like somebody had been hit with a hammer in the head right in front of that wall. And I was just like, what the fuck is this? You know, I was like, all right, apparently this is normal. So, yeah, I just stayed there. I didn't, like, say anything to the hotel or anything like that. Oh, you just stayed there? Yeah, I mean, there was no blood on the bed itself. It was just the (laughs) headboard and a wall. So 
I, you know, uh, <laughs> come your, on. Your threshold for... <laughs> come on. Lo- come, you, you think that the hotel didn't know about it? You think the people who cleaned that shit didn't see there's a one and a half meter wide thing of blood on a fucking wall? And maybe, maybe they got a very good tip. And, and you, you know, not, not say you know what else? God knows what the other rooms might have looked like based on just the general situation. So, yeah, I didn't say anything. I just slept there and had a good time. But, oh boy, that was a shitty hotel. And on a, on, on a related note, this time actually related, uh, Nevada just legalized recreational yeah they legalized marijuana. recreational marijuana yeah uh, yeah that's good good for them i mean jesus out of all the places where you would expect it would be legal it's like the yeah i guess it makes sin sense that... city sin state kind of thing i don't know i mean I just, i'm surprised that it hasn't happened sooner i will be interested to see how vegas and the casino industry feels about it because i kind of you feel... can smoke in, in the casinos no but i mean that doesn't stop you from smoking outside of them and then coming in right I but, guess. but I'm curious to see, because if you're high, you're a little more paranoid and cautious. Like, imagine, like, if you've been drinking some alcohol mm, and you yeah. smoke, for me, and I think probably for you and, and for a lot of people, you slow down on your alcohol consumption. You're like, you get a little wrecked and you're like, whoa, I'm a little more fucked up than I thought I was. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, so then you stop drinking alcohol so much or you at least slow down. For some people, I know it's not for everyone, but you become a little more cautious, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I wonder, like, if people normally, when they drink, like, they get, that's that helps them gamble more because they their inhibitions are reduced. They don't really care as much. So alcohol is like the perfect drug for the casinos to make more money. That's why they give you free drinks and comp all your shit sometimes, and come around with you know uh, drinks for you. But I wonder how much they're going to see of an effect, like of loss of money or like less gambling, like people being less willing to gamble because they smoke. And I imagine it'll only fit, affect like kind of the casual people that come there. Hardcore gamblers and degenerates are still going to just do whatever, you know, because that's their thing. But yeah, it's a good point. I haven't thought about that. I'm, I'm curious about that, like how they feel about that. I wouldn't be surprised if, well, I don't know if it will be noticeable, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm pretty if, sure it will be noticeable. I mean, I don't know how well, I don't big know how of many, an effect how many people. Well, what I'm saying is, I bet that they can measure it in the stats and they will see some difference. Now, whether it's significant or not, like a like a huge effect where they care. I mean, they probably just make up the money from selling weed at the you know at the casinos. I don't mm-hmm. know, but but I don't know. That that was the first thing that came to my mind when I when I saw that news. And I heard something about here now, farmers are going to be able to grow, for some reason, uh, cannabis in some test or some trial thing. But I don't have an article. I tried to find it, but it was like a week or two ago, something that came out about that in in here in Denmark. But I think we talked about, uh, they were trying to legalize it uh, for medical purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like for a one or two year trial period, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they should just do it. Pretty much everywhere in the world should just do it. I think it's just a matter of time. But it is, really, pretty much. I think and now, since the United States started doing it, I guess everyone who thinks the, the US... Well, maybe fewer people think the US are cool now because of yeah, I think fewer, Mr. President. Yeah, but, fewer people really give any credit to the US but, anymore uh, now that we are just made a fool of ourselves with this whole Donald Trump situation. But I wouldn't be surprised if some countries try to follow the footsteps of the our great american uh, <laughs> brothers and sisters yeah, yeah maybe i'm well i mean you can see i don't know it, it's having positive effects i think so as well so i think so as well yeah so i don't know we, we don't have a whole lot more as far as articles oh there's the anyway. there's the jazz festival yeah that's true the jazz we didn't festival talk about that. is uh, happening right now why don't you talk about it a little? You seem like more of a jazzy type cat than I am. I am not much of a jazzy cat. Are you not? But uh, but I I do I I really like the festival, especially especially if it doesn't rain like most festivals. Uh, it's it's really nice to even just walk around the city, and just kind of stumble upon different performances and stages and stuff like that. Yesterday when I was walking to the office, uh, I actually passed by one that sounded pretty fucking good. Okay. A bunch of old people sitting there on Hoipo Plus. It it sounded very nice. But it, I, I I just like the <coughs> yeah, that's like I don't know much about jazz, so I don't I'm not like, okay, let's go see this artist or this one. So I just like the walking around the city, 
maybe have, 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 have a drink, you know, just walk around when the sun is, the weather is nice, stop by. If, if something, and just kind of happen upon it and be like, oh, that attention. catches your ear. And yeah, you, 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 just, hear you just stop for a couple of songs. Well, that's the thing about the jazz festival here is it's not really like a traditional festival in that sense, like a place where you go and there's some already preset stages for like a whole week. There's a lot of all, preset stages. All, well, I know, but for a whole week all over the city, you have like 1,400 different events kind of all over the place. Yeah, I mean, I, I think... <laughs> the stage, uh, some of the stages at least are always in the same places. Sure. Like sure. the big squares and stuff like that, yeah. you know? But uh, but yeah, they just kind of pop here and there. And then some have stages, some it's just a bunch of people on the street, kind of like street performer, performing, blah, street performers. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll Wood, see some stuff. Woody Allen is actually coming because he plays clarinet. Yeah, that's right. He's, He's going to be in Ama in, in the Ama Bio or whatever. Is that right? I do. Yeah, Ama Bio. He'll be there 10th of July. 10th of July. That's what, tomorrow? T two days. It's Monday. It's Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay. At uh, 8 o'clock in the evening. But it's expensive. It's like 515 crowns. Yeah, that's pretty pricey. And, and I've, I, who I've knows heard if you can find tickets too. Oh, maybe not anymore. I've Let's see if heard, they're sold out. I've heard that uh, he's not the greatest clarinet player, <laughs> but uh, but I'm not sure if that's true or not. It's certainly better than me. What is that, 1,300 krona? Yeah, depending on if you want the seating place on the, the floor. Okay, so the cheapest ones are 500. Yeah, or the balcony. So the balcony is 515, and then the floor seats are like 1,000 1, wow. or a 1,300 crowns, depending. You sit in the back here, right? I guess. I don't know. All right. Well, anyways, if you want to see Woody Allen, <laughs> you can or do if that. you want to, if you want to hear some. Jazz. But I think there's a lot of uh, there's some stuff on uh, Roll House Plus as well, or Plus as well. Twelfth yeah, of July. There's, there's a lot of there's a lot of events. I, yeah. And I'm sure there's some. I think Herbie Hancock was coming here as well. Oh, here you go. You can actually go to the uh, in Christania to the Buona Tierra. As well, yeah, and that's actually every every day, pretty every much. Day. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's at night, pretty much every day there. Yeah, and on La Fontaine, which is a popular jazz place here as well, and Jazz Who's Montmartre, and Cava Bar. Cava Bar. I don't know where Cava Bar is. I don't either. But yeah, Sounds if you like jazz, good. well, if you like jazz, you're probably already aware of this. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, just go for a stroll on the city. Listen to some jazz. Can't avoid it. It's very nice. Yeah, yeah. Seems good. And if you really want to see Woody Allen, well, you have to. Yeah. You have to pay for it. Or you can just watch it on YouTube and realize that maybe I don't. I don't know if he's good or not. I just remember. Uh, I don't know for it. Oh, you don't know the time. I don't know the time. I forgot okay. to start the, the clock. Yeah, I was just but curious I, how long we've been going. But I can tell you one thing: we've been going for at least an hour for sure. Yeah. Well, we try to keep the episodes under. Like around one and a half hours, because once we get to a certain point, the file size gets too large to export. Yeah, I I suspect it's been like one hour and 15 minutes or something like that. Hmm. Maybe more, 120. Yeah. We'll see after. Well, there were a few other things too related to food as well. Didn't we have, uh, so there's a new Noma, a new Noma pop-up like restaurant, or maybe it's not the official Noma, but some people that, worked at noma are opening some pop-up kind of restaurant thing under yeah, until noma actually reopens i believe under nipples pro nipples bridge Bull, yeah. and that's going to be opening the 19th of july so another 11 days from now um and it will be like family style open fire yeah I, I have no idea what you what just it's gonna be, but eat it, together uh on a long table Hmm. Oh, so it's a very social, yeah, very social I guess, thing. Yeah, I guess so. I used to go to, or I did go to, to a restaurant that had that concept where basically just a long table. Yeah. And I mean, you come either by yourself or with people. And, and just sit down at yeah, the and table. Yeah, just sit down. And the first time I went, th th there wasn't really much interaction with anybody else. But the second time, um, it was actually very nice, like, there was a there was a lot of I guess the people there were more um, I don't know how to say it they were more willing to talk with yeah strangers. like more friendly interactive yeah and we actually stayed like after dinner we stayed there for like three four hours more just Talking. kind of hanging out with the people and they had some live music afterwards 
Oh, that's cool. This was uh, Ostergro. Okay. They, yeah, when they had it at the roof rooftop in Ostopo, I don't know where they are doing it anymore. Hmm. They might, yeah, they might be open. I need to check them out again. Hmm, sounds good. Yeah, so this will be under Nivelsbro from July 19th until September 3rd. So there you go. If you want to go eat some Noma type stuff on a long table, maybe meet somebody new. The menu is a thousand crowns inclusive with uh, drinks. Damn. There you go. And you can also get it without alcohol. So it's not uh, it's not the same as Burger King. <clears throat> no, a thousand crowns isn't too bad though. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, not. if you're talking about like a, <laughs> yeah. if you're talking about chefs from like Noma, I mean that's I mean, that's what you're gonna expect to pay. I mean, at Noma for one menu plus drinks, you pay what, like two or two two thousand? Well it's, it's still it's still not a like a student restaurant. No, 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 not at all. And then apparently the food market and Papir oh, yeah. is closing, but a new one will open soon on Ref Shelun. Ref Shelun, yeah. So what's my my guess is that they're just moving. Well, yeah, maybe it's not I the think exact so. same owners. Maybe so it's not the exact same. So thirty first of December this year, they will close Papir Un, and then apparently they'll open a new uh, food market in twenty eighteen on Ref Shelun. Uh, they have. Like all in all, I think they have an area of like a total of ten thousand meters squared for the new place. Some of it by the water, some of it in like a large uh, warehouse or something. And then I think the important thing is how accessible it will be. Yeah, because even all Papier- that stuff on Ref Shelun is a little bit out it's of the way. A bit further out, yeah. And, and even all- Papier Un is not entirely accessible. Yeah, on the way. It's because of the bridge Before the situation bridge. Yeah, now there. It's better. Yeah, it, the the whole bridge situation over there, at least when you're coming down Princess Ago, is kind of a, it, it's a little bit um, out of the way, I guess. But uh, with, the, with the new bridge from... Um, so they have a new bridge Newhound. from Newhound. Well, they have the one from Newhound yeah. that they... <laughs> that, that goes over, that they fucked up for yeah, so long. Yeah, the one that they fucked up several times. If you don't know um, the story of this bridge, they basically managed to fuck up like they built the whole thing and then whenever they realized it wasn't going to meet at the right location, they were off I mean, by quite a bit. The, the bridge has basically been delayed like three, four times. Yeah. But it's there now. There you go. And people still complain about it. Yeah. Because there's a, there's a curve there that doesn't make much sense. And there's but also at, some paint on it that makes it quite slippery in the wet <laughs> and cold. But uh, but at least it's more accessible now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they're moving. So. Oh, this was maybe that article you were talking about the other day. All the stuff people... Found and oh left. yeah, all the th- I think, look. There's a picture. That's all the. It's basically pictures of all the stuff that people forgot or just left behind in Hoskilde. And it, there's a picture there with hundreds of cell phones. There's hundreds. Look at that. I don't know if there's hundreds on that picture, but it certainly looks like holy shit. At least man. several dozen. Oh no, that's there's there's at least a hundred. And there they have them sure. labeled by like the type of phone. I mean, yeah. look how many iPhone 6s there there's, are. There's so many that's people who nuts. lost their phone and keys. There's a bunch of keys as well. Jeez, man. And it, it, it's funny because on the le- we were there. I was there on Sunday because I was working on Sunday. So when I left. I actually got to see basically what a lot of people left behind. And people leave everything behind. They leave tents. They leave sleeping bags. They leave everything. Yeah. Oh, that's fucked up, man. They do leave a like, fuck ton of trash. My friend just picked up two chairs, two of those. <laughs> two of those uh, like kind the of, outdoor lawn or the yeah, chairs. Yeah, the ones that you fold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just picked them up like, okay, <laughs> I have chairs for next year now. Hmm. People just leave everything. Yeah. It's crazy. I I actually it, it it gives a really good impression of how good life is here, you know? Just like luxury, the luxury of people that they can just afford. And Something. this is mostly young people, I will assume. Leave a bunch they, of they shit. They can just behind. afford to buy this shit and just leave it behind because next year I'll just buy a new one. Yeah, I guess so. It's 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 really wasteful. I think that's that's what's affects me the most it's just like come on just you're not a very wasteful just, kind just, of guy I, I try not to i mean it, would would you go and eat some of that food that was left behind at hoskilde yeah well i mean if someone leaves food behind on the <laughs> on, on the floor no <laughs> <laughs> but 
But if 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 on Sunday, so after the festival was over, yeah. If I if well, there was like if a food, was, if there was a food there was truck a f- that had a bunch of shit left and they were yeah, like yeah. getting rid of it, you'd, you'd try to yeah, take it. Yeah, sure, of yeah, course. Yeah. Why not? Fair enough. If, especially if they're gonna throw it away. Don't want to waste that. I I don't like wasting stuff. Yeah, no, you don't. Especially I, I almost wanted to bring some chairs myself, you know, just not to leave them there for the garbage. Yeah. But I didn't want to carry. I'll just buy some next year. Oh, that's another. That's one thing that I learned from House Kilda as well. Buy next some boots. year, next year. Well, I'm yeah, definitely buy some boots. But next year, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring one of those folding chairs. Yeah. Because yeah. apparently you can buy them. Like they come with a backpack, so you just carry them on your back. Yeah. And uh, I guess if 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 I get tired of carrying it around, I can just leave it somewhere, and someone will enjoy it. But. You you really want to sit down after if you yeah just you've been standing, standing for, for five time. six seven hours you're like okay I need somewhere to sit and then if everybody's if everywhere's covered in mud and all the other seats that you would sit on are taken yeah you can't see, exactly yeah. you can sit on the grass yeah. but if it's muddy well you can't yeah and I think the I think one thing that I missed from Hoskilde that uh, apparently it's one of the big parts of uh, the Hoskilde experience that I didn't get to really experience. Is going there with a camp, you know, so just basically hanging out at the camping sites, yeah, as opposed to at the festival area, yeah. Uh, apparently, there's a lot of people who basically just go there and they just hang out at the camping area the whole time, you know. I mean, they don't usually, give a shit about concerts. Usually, for me, I mean, uh, like when we go to Smoke Fest, I mean, I enjoy the the majority of the time. I just enjoy hanging out with the guys, and I mean, of course, we have an office there, so we it's better than a camp, you know. We have a yeah. place where we can actually cook and. Toilets. And drink and toilets and shower and all that. But I mean, we just end up hanging out in the kitchen and just shooting the shit and drinking and, and eating and whatever. And then every now and then, if there's a good show or something we actually want to go see. Or if we're hungry. Yeah. I mean, I think the the first day, pretty much everyone goes down there to see what's going on, you know, and just yeah. kind of get acquainted with the scene. But then as the days go by, like, I think more and more people are selective about what they want to go see, like only good shows that they like. And then the rest of the time they're Usually just hanging out and and chilling, and I th- I think that's the more enjoyable part, just spending time together and getting wrecked, basically. <laughs> it makes sense, but ne- yeah, that's something that I want to experience more next time. Yeah, try to try to find a group of people, <laughs> have our own flag. Yeah. I really I really want to have a flag. <laughs> I really want to have a pole in the flag. Well, now you got you got to think about the and design. The what oh, I know, I know, it's gonna be. Well, I'm not going to say it because somebody might steal it. Yeah. All the 15 people no. All the listeners listening to this. Going to um, steal our flag. But uh, but it'll be a good one. It'll be recognizable from from far, uh, far behind. From outer space. Maybe. Like the wall of China. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't have much more. I mean, I think we're 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 close to the hour. All right, let's 30. do it. Let's, uh... I got to go. I got to get ready and go to uh, Sticks and Sushi, too. So. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll we'll call it here. It's been a good one, and uh, thank you guys for listening. That's it. Send us an email uh, or drop <laughs> drop us a line on a Facebook. You know, yeah, then on then on Facebook, unfiltered Copenhagen. That's uh, that's that's really helpful. Is and it? Uh, well, I don't know. I like to I like to believe so. <laughs> Fair enough. Come on, if if you have if, uh, if we have some reviews on different don't things, do it's it helpful. Then I don't care. Yeah, don't don't add us Reverse on Facebook. Reverse psychology. Don't yeah. do it. Yeah, don't do it. It's actually bad for us if you do it. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. See you guys next next time.